Is a cell tower going up in your neighborhood? If it's not now, it may soon. Wireless carriers are installing millions of them across the country to enable the new, faster 5G cell phone technology. But tonight, Julie Watts asked the question you're not supposed to ask. Are there legitimate health concerns? Health concerns. A group of scientists, doctors, environmental organizers, and concerned citizens got together and they called for the urgent stop to the deployment of 5G. They mm. said that it's been proven harmful to human bodies, that this is an experiment on humanity, mm. and that this should be called a crime under international law. If 4G is already doing some of this, how much more potentially dangerous will 5G be and why? Well, here's what's really dangerous about 5G. I mean, it's being sold to us as super awesome, but the downside is that with this rollout, it will be impossible to exist in a city or to walk outside without being exposed. There's going to be a cell tower in front of every few houses. Mm. And this means that your personal choices, whether or not you personally use a cell phone or hold it 10 inches away from your head, that cannot escape you from your radiation exposure. And the fact is, the government is completely not jumping on the ball. I mean, because of the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which says that no state or local government can regulate the placement of any cell towers, regardless of environmental effects, right. that has really laid the groundwork for this toxic infrastructure. Toxic infrastructure. Toxic infrastructure. Kelly Prime's son Kyle was just 10 years old when he was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 2016. Five months later, Kyle's friend and classmate Mason Ferruli developed brain cancer. 14 hours to get the tumor out and he had five weeks of inpatient rehabilitation. He had to learn to walk, talk, eat, everything all over again. Two more kids at the school were diagnosed this year. At what point are you saying, we ought to take a close look at the school here. The moment that I found out that Mason had been diagnosed, diagnosed. Whenever you hear of cases of cancer in a child, obviously that itself is alarming. When there's several cases in one school, that's even more alarming. Do you believe the oncologists who say cell towers can't cause cancer? I believe that everybody wants to believe our government. I've looked into his eyes and I've looked at the fear that he has as a nine-year-old facing something, asking me, Mom, am I going to die? It would push you to fight as well. It would push any parent to fight. I won't stop until it's done, until that thing is gone. gone. 5G is a weapon. It's used by the military. Do you know these 5G millimeter wave technologies are used to scatter crowds? You know, they, 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 they drive up in, these, in this technology when they want to scatter a cloud and they put out these frequencies and people scatter because they get the feeling their skin is on fire. Because the human body, including the skin, is an antenna. It interacts with frequencies and it receives and transmits information. These are extremely dangerous readings of radio frequency radiation going through my body. There are going to be boxes broadcasting 5G, this weapon, down every street, all over the world. You're talking phenomenal numbers of these boxes. boxes. T 5G capable cell tower across the street from an elementary school and right outside John Ireland's third floor condo in Sherman Oaks. It sits right outside our dining room window. In fact, I can see it from the couch too. A couch John and his neighbors gathered around one afternoon as they discussed ways to get rid of the tower. There was no advance notice whatsoever. We saw them digging and the next thing we know there was this giant thing on the lamppost. John's wife is a two-time cancer survivor. And they put this monster out there, right next to where I sit at a dining room table, 
right next to the chair where I watch television. Now that you've seen these cell yeah, towers, you'll uh -huh. see them all over your neighborhood. I've been working mm. on this story for about two months, and I see them everywhere now. So they're coming. Well, when you say mm. that they're that the standards are are well within the FCC guidelines, yes, I'd be more comfortable with the CDC. Yes, the Centers, Centers for, for Disease, Disease Control. Control. Yeah, well, because we know sometimes how that FCC how that works. Sure, right? They don't necessarily test it themselves first before they okay it. They take it. They they take um, the word of a company that actually tests. Well, everybody agrees more research needs to be done. Yeah. So okay. hopefully that will happen. We'll remember this Thank report. You. We have video from the FCC proceedings with one of the 5G engineers saying themselves, look, we are forcing these these directed beams into people's windows at, at levels that we do not allow in our labs, in our safety labs. What we have is the industry clearly lying to public representatives, which should, which should outrage you enough that you stop the process. And what you need to understand is no wireless device, and 5G included, is safety tested. In December of 2018, I sent a letter to FCC Commissioner Carr asking him to cite for me recent scientific studies demonstrating the safety of this technology. What research has been done, where has it been published, and compiled. He has essentially failed to do so. No, I'm not aware of any. So there really is no research ongoing. We're kind of flying blind here, so far as health and safety is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You might be asking, perhaps some people are being injured by this, but if you're not feeling it, it's probably not that big of a deal. And I think that's a very common experience. But it's not as simple as saying that just a few unfortunate people are being affected by this. Because what the science shows is that we're all affected on some level, whether we can feel it or not. So to think that we could put an exponential amount of microwave radiation into our environment and not feel effects is simply false. And it's not just headaches and, and insomnia. It's much more serious things, such as infertility, DNA damage, and eventually cancer. 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 Across the street is the cell phone tower. Alright, so I'm in line of sight of the cell phone tower right here. And you can see I have the meter set to peak. And I'm getting peak readings. Uh, it almost overloads the meter. When it goes to one, that's an overload. So we're at roughly 1,500 to 2,000 microwatts per square meter. And you can see the radio frequency meters pointing right at the cell phone tower. Now, watch what happens when I walk in back of the bank building. So now, the cell phone tower is being blocked by the building, but I'm still picking up 50 to 75 microwatts per square meter, and the radio frequency radiation is not going around the building, it's going through the building. And this is my concern for people who work inside this building. I'm standing behind solid brick walls here, and I'm still picking up 60 to 80 microwatts per square meter biological effects are said to start at 3.4 to 6 microwatts per square meter. 5G will be as much as 100 times faster than the current 4G cellular networks. The FCC is taking very bold action, probably bolder than they've ever taken before. It's a new frontier to make wireless spectrum available. By next year, the United States is on pace to have more 5G spectrum than any other country in the world. That's a big statement because, as you know, some people got ahead of us. We should have been doing this a long time ago, as advanced as it may be. In addition, last October, I directed the Department of Commerce to develop a national spectrum strategy to free up even more spectrum for economic activity, including 5G. The FCC has also taken action to streamline the permitting process for 5G infrastructure with state and local governments. That's a big deal. 
It takes too long to get permits. We're going to free that situation up and we're going to put limits and uh, the local areas are going to listen to us very, very strongly. They have a big incentive to do that. They must now approve new physical infrastructure within 90 days instead of many years. It can sometimes take three, four and five years. Now, we're going to put a limit of 90 days. And there is now a cap on the unreasonable fees local governments often charge. They get greedy. They think, hey, we can really take advantage. And it ends up that everybody gets hurt. Everybody gets hurt. Everybody gets hurt. Everybody gets hurt. Given this information, you can see why someone like me or anybody else that has dealt with a cancer diagnosis has a concern over the implementation of 5G technology. <clears throat> My questions to the committee are, has the committee determined that this technology is safe? And if you have, what safety determinations were done? What kind of scientific or medical background did these people do to make a determination that this technology is safe for me, for you, for your children, for your grandchildren? This technology is very controversial, and I believe we need to give serious consideration up front to the review of the scientific and medical research studies and documentation. Many experts have determined that this technology is unsafe for human health, and I think the committee needs to take this into consideration. So I have a request, it's twofold. I request that this Energy and Technology Committee please take some time, take a pause, review the testimony of and, and and the documents that are available to people and the hope is that we will be able to bring some more documentation to you to show you the medical and scientific inf impacts of this technology. I'm not sure I understand what the rush is to push this through before people have had an opportunity to provide you some information to show you that there is danger to you and your families. My dinner table conversation is what other countries don't have this technology? Are we going to be leaving our families to just be safe, just be able to live? When I go out of town to stay in a hotel, I have to see how close it is to a cell phone tower, if it has a cell phone tower. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. Um, we have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects. So 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. The closer you live to a cell tower, the higher your blood glucose that is based on hemoglobin A1C measurements. So the idea with small cells of putting the cells closer to people's homes and bedrooms, scientifically, is very dangerous. You probably don't even notice them, but cell towers are everywhere, especially here in downtown. Like this one behind me, it's that white cylinder you see sitting on top of that light pole. And with 5G coming to San Diego, there's going to be even more of them. People need to check this stuff out protesting the rollout of a 5G network in San Diego. We don't want to be experimented on. They're not doing the proper safety studies. And for hours, speaker after speaker addressed the county board of supervisors today. Local neighborhoods would be seeing something the size of a refrigerator showing up on a street pole and they could say nothing to stop it. A library, a school. On traffic signals, on light poles. This would give the companies free reign to install these small cells on any public infrastructure and we would have no ability to say no. Stop the rollout of 5G service. That is the message hundreds of people are trying to send to Charlotte leaders. They're popping up outside bedroom windows and school campuses, despite objections from across the country. I think doing more studies is always a good thing. Do you think that maybe you should consider putting a pause on legislation that speeds up these towers until there's definitive evidence that there is no harm? We can do a lot of studies, and there are people right now, believe it or not, we're sure the world is flat. We're going to get some meters and we're going to measure the, the microwave radiation today and then when the cell towers go up we can measure it and see how dangerous it really is. And he says if he has to, 
they'll move. For my daughter's health, definitely. The view from Denise Tufano's Woodbury home abruptly changed last month, towering on her front lawn, a cell phone repeater. I could not believe this was actually happening. I said, how could the town permit this? How could they do this to us? She and Woodbury neighbors fuming over the placement of 22 cell repeaters for Verizon in front of homes on what's technically public property without notice or compensation. You couldn't give me 10 million dollars for this okay uh, there are potential health risks to these uh, they are aesthetically not pleasing there's also the devaluation of our home properties 5g technology promises faster service but the jury is out on constant exposure to its radio frequency radiation your cell phone you use you put down microwave you use you stop this is constant bombardment and we don't know what uh, is the long-term effects residents say they're cell service was good enough. This is an issue that is critical, not just to all of Long Island, but all of the United States, because across the United States, no wireless facilities are being tested. Some call it a microwave brew, steps from their bedroom windows. There are communities that are putting down ordinances in place that will prevent 5G from going in. This community is supposed to be a progressive community. We need to do the same thing. We need to get a town ordinance in place before they roll this out. Once they roll it out, it's gonna be hard to stop. When they unleash this on us, uh, which is not very far off, you can't see it from here, but just the other side there, you can actually see the cell tower on an apartment building not very far away. And when we did the inspection on this home, we found the readings inside the home were significant and, and way above uh, what are called uh, building biology safety standards. Building biology was the original discipline in electromagnetic radiation out of Germany. So the, the readings inside this house are way too high for comfort and long-term exposure can lead to significant health challenges. So what we're doing with this house is we are shielding it. I got my first cell phone in 1993. It's a long time ago. You, you couldn't even use it outside of the city. Uh, now, it, coverage is virtually everywhere, and, and the levels that we're being exposed to have in increased dramatically and increase every single month. And so now, people think it's normal. Um, the technology has been what I call normalized. If you watch your favorite TV show, everybody's got a smartphone. Everybody's talking on the smartphone. And so it's become normal to, to people. You go to any big store and every third person is on the phone. You walk downtown and everybody's having a chat, walking down the street. Uh, so how could it possibly be dangerous, right? We are here at the Supreme Court because this is an absolute and major injustice that's happening right under our noses. Literally, people have no idea. With the rollout of 5G, we no longer can afford to be quiet. We can no longer afford to be still and not take action. What I ask every person here and every person watching this video is that you wake up and you wake up others. That you take action. We already know that the wireless industry has met with the president and gotten his commitment to facilitate the rollout of 5G small cell tout transmitters near people's homes. And the lies of the industry are magnificent. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. bloodshed. More than machinery, we need humanity. humanity. Without these qualities, life will be violent, and all will be lost. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world. To those who can hear me, I say, 
do not despair. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason, a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. We have a significant problem. It's common sense. We are electromagnetic beings. We conduct. Our cells operate electromagnetically. They repair electromagnetically, they communicate electromagnetically, and we are messing with the basic functioning of our cells. We are microwaving our population. We are microwave poisoning our population, and we're also wondering why everyone's getting cancer, it seems like. We are microwaving our reproductive organs and wondering why we're having these problems. As Daphna Takover says, we have a failure of common sense. Of common sense. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin.